Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. And th thanks, AppSec, for having me. And today, we're going to talk a bit about analyzing traffic. It's not only about traffic. It's about the whole application. And we're splitting some steps. I try to show everything. I have a bunch of slides, so I will try to, to cover all the slides. And so just a quick introduction. Uh, I work as security administrator at Sucuri. I have two patent pending technologies. Uh, I used to do research, and so I start to have pictures as this. So I just moved back to our system administrator because <laughs> I was getting too crazy. Uh, I'm an open source guy. I really like to share information, and so like if I'm uh, if those research were only mine, I probably do some scripts and publish public publish at GitHub, <laughs> but the company didn't allow. I do triathlon on my, my spare time. Not really on my spare time, but <laughs> I do a lot of triathlon. And I'm a dad. I have a, a six-month baby that is making life a little bit busy, <laughs> but that's awesome. So just a quick overview about my company, since they are paying and allowing me to spend my time on that. I work for Sucuri Security. We have like mostly malware removal and we have cloud proxy that our product. So most of the ideas I, I'm going to talk here, we use in our product. So I'm just sharing something that for real life. And I heard that we have Joy here that he's a sales manager and he's giving three months trial to everybody that talks to him. So. If you want to talk about Techie, talk to me. If you want some trials, talk to him. And I have some challenge on the middle of the presentation. And I don't have too much stuff, but I have this to hold beers. So that's awesome. And if, if you answer my, my challenge, the, the, right, the right answer, I will give you. All right, if you answer, I could give you like just three guys answer. So uh, I did my talk based on WordPress. Like, that's, that's just uh, a, con a conceptual idea. There is no big secret. I use WordPress because mostly, talking about CMS, I think it's the market use like 23% of CMS are WordPress. So that's a good, a good number. So our motivations, besides, behind the talk is we would like to do something different. We don't call really Wafi, like we are not a, we are not a competitor with Imperva or Mod Security, stuff like that. We have some different approach. We, fo we have a big focus on some technologies. So we mostly try to do less rules since we are, we are working with whitelisting and have better performance. And a kind of not too hypey, like we protect against all days, not really, but since we work with the whitelisting, we have better protection for zero days. So our agenda, quick introduction, the, the five steps, the four steps that we use here, some challenge we have, and some conclusions. We have some ideas about some projects that maybe you could put, we could put under the OWASP project. That would be great, to, so we could share more information and make the web a safer place. We could not make that safer, because if it's too safe, we don't have jobs, right? So you need to balance. <laughs> just just a, a quick question. Did, who watched the SMS Hacking 101 talk here? Nobody? That was a great talk. They have some good hacking stuff on the, the talk. And I will mention like some hacking that he did that I thought it's very interesting and how we could protect using our ideas. That's very fun. So just to normalize the concepts. Like reverse engineer, it's really analyze something, understand how it works, and duplicate or create something similar, or in our case, we analyze and create something to protect. 
another quick slide. We are not looking for bugs or security flaws. We don't care about that. For sure, if you found something, that's good. But we are looking for traffic. Like, I'm a system administrator, and so I love PCAPs. That's what, what I love. And so, like, if you look for whitelisting, I try to find something, and I, I found this NIST publication. It's a draft, it, and they don't talk exactly about web application whitelisting. They're talking about softwares, regular softwares. But basically, whitelist is like to run something, you need to be on this way. If something is a bit different, it's, it's something like we could consider malicious, like uh, uncommon behavior. So whitelisting is like I, I analyze, I see how it works, and so I create something like must be on this way. That seems, uh, if, you, if you think about that, it's kind of basic, but sometimes it's too hard to do that. Like, if you if talk about the whitelisting softwares, like, there is much more malicious software than non-malicious softwares. So it's much easier to allow the, the non-malicious softwares instead of block the, the malicious softwares. So I really like this concept about whitelisting. And so in our OAuth detection, we are going to analyze traffic, application structure. So we are using the WordPress stuff and analyze the file structure. And so uh, see what's, which are the more important files, how the attacks handle those files, how, what you should prevent to have access to, to those directories. We talk about the headers and some behaviors because behavior is important because like if you try to just drop on the on the request sometimes it's a kind of impossible you need to have more information some thresholds and stuff like that and so like as i said i said before we are going to use the road press as base but you could convert the idea to any application some application will take a lot of more time and some application the kind of easier, or maybe if you do in the future, as we're going to talk, you create some WASP project. It could have a lot of information ready to go, so you just use that. So we have a four detection steps. What is a four detection steps? That's, that's a kind of, we reverse the traffic, so we generate traffic, and we analyze traffic, and we see like, what is a regular traffic? What, what a normal traffic will do, will do? And so we analyze the application structure. So like, we have a bunch of files. Oh, you, have, you look into the, the directory of application, you have a hundred files, thousands of files. So probably you could not cover all the files, but at least you could, you could cover the most important files, the, so we have a kind of local protection and hardening. We need to mitigate and the, the attack surface because nothing is 100%. Like, so if you do those protection, like you reverse the traffic and so you create like the uh, good, good blocks on the request, you analyze the structure and you protect the most important files, but nothing is 100%. And so you need to have some local mitigation. And you're going to talk about that. And, and, and the, the talk that Greg, said, Greg, Greg did yesterday, we covered some, some things that he, show, he showed, but if the application were using something that we are talking here, you're, you're being protected. And the statistical data. So, we, I have a pleasure to work in a Disneyland because we have a lot of information. Like we handle traffic from like thousands of thousands of domains. And so like we have a lot of st statistical data that you could provide some tuning. And talking here, like all those steps, they, were, they talk to each other. I will get more in deep in each step, but the statistical data is awesome. Like, we detect a lot of new behaviors, new trends, stuff like that. 
So the very first step, let's analyze the traffic. So when we talk about traffic, web traffic, we have like, are you hearing me okay? This is working. Okay. We have like a bunch of information each analyze. So this is a kind of mind map. Probably have more or less information. But we have the HP protocol, so we start like looking on the not really on HP protocol, but the IP source, the method. So we have the URA, we have the headers, the request and response, we have the bar request, HTTP version, and stats codes. Like mostly I I put here the the most common header uh, information that we handle and we use to protect. So we start to do some analysis. So first, we need to crawl, do some crawling, some spidering. So for, for this sample, I just use here, I use burp. Everybody use burp or zappy or, or anything you want. So what is, what's the good side about burp? You have the spidering, and you could emulate a regular user. Like, where's the first step? I have nothing. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm talking like, I, I just have an application that my developer wants to put online and I need to protect. So what do you do? Uh, I spider. That's the easiest way to, to, to see what's going on. Because if you talk to the developer, most of the time they do not tell everything what's going on. So I just like some crawling here. So I start to crawl everything and find information, and follow the links and and try to, to catch and to create a, a real site map. Here have some parameters, like in this case, but we use burp for that. And besides using burp, what do you need to do? You are crawling the information. So you need to run a, a CP dump in the, the server and save a PCAP. Because like in future, you don't want to do all the time the spider. there. So you have the information saved, and so we could create some 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 script and make the the work easier. Like because like most who is system administrators here? Only one. Most of developers. And like system administrators, like we are lazy. We like to script everything <laughs> because we don't want to do the same the same task every time. So. We, we need to crawl, save it as a PCAP, and so, and so test again and again, but using a PCAP, that's much easier. And so you, can, you could have like some T-sharks and wild shark kung fu commands that make, it, make the parsing pretty basic. So look at the get request. Like, a get request is pretty basic. So why do you look, when you have the traffic, why do you look on the, the get request? Like you have the method here, so you have the URA here, and here you have some variables. What, what's what's, what's the, the good about the burp? They have like, they put some colors, and so they make a lot of easier. If you want, you, you have the params here, split it in a different tab. But here you have like a username, Rodrigo, ID, and parameter X, and just simulate something. And when you're looking here, what what you need to look like? I don't know nothing about. So I know username will be supposed to be only words, correct? I, I don't think nobody has a uh, at in name, or they don't have like another special character on the name. So what do you do? Like you see like oh, so username will be mostly space because maybe you have two names like Rodrigo, space Montoro. And words, nobody have numbers on name, unless you are too, unless your dad is too, is a big hacker and want to have your hacker name, right? <laughs> like with zero, like my nickname. Like you have ID here. ID is only a number. So wh what's, the, wh wh what's the point? Like if I look like if ID is a number, why I you try to compare with a, a lot of different things. It's, it's, not, it's not easier like I just get ID equal, I create a regex like a number. Anything different from a number for me is malicious. Doesn't matter. 
a simple word is malicious. And the, in the, the previous talk, the CMS hacking, like the, there was a, a flaw in a core file of Joomla on that case. And what he, he did, like just discover, he changed ID to something else than a number. And so the, the, the application the broke and so and, and show the, oh, you have a wrong carry. So you just need to fix and put the correct carry. And so he could like access the whole database. But if ID, you have a rule that's blocked only for a number, you not have that problem. You could have the, still have the bug because like the bug is there. But you, you kind of have a virtual patching. They're not going to have access to that bug. And there is no sense. It's a kind of like when you go to the bar, like you want a beer, right? You don't say like, I don't want whiskey, I don't want, I don't want vodka, I don't want Red Bull, I don't want Coke, I don't want, no. I, you want a beer. You go straight. And so the protection needs to go straight or something you want. So another point you could you need to take care is like user agent is very important, like very important part. I, I did the research in the past, like malicious user agent. They used to be smaller than regular user agents. Another very important point, HTTP version. Like if you look on the RFC from the HTTP 1.1, they, 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 they say like uh, HTTP 1.0, for example, is not, is not waiting for the host header. And so like, that's a kind of mismatch, like if you see like HTTP 1.0 with some host that a, a regular browser will never send that. And so like another, another point here that the number of headers, that's very important. Like on the, my previous research, if you look on the number of headers going to your application, like if a regular browser usually is more than eight headers. Never age. And the malicious guys, they don't care too much about RFC and that stuff. They just want to send traffic. They usually have three, four. So that's kind of stuff we need to start to figure out. So like that's a regular, a regular request. In, and, and it's all about how you look on the request. Like just maybe change how you look on that. Another, just to, to, to enumerate a post request, a post usually you have the post method, you have the URA here, and the content, you have the bar content, just over here. Usually when you have like some buttons and stuff like that, it's supposed to use post, since it's a kind of more secure. And you have the information here. What, one point you need to really pay attention when you're creating blocks, and some attackers really take care about that, and some are not. You have some extra information that the, bu the button, the button will we, we add to the request. And so I will show like something that will show. Another point like we have the var variable PW for the password. Like that's kind of you could not write a list, right? <laughs> because you're not going to write a list and say, no, you just could use like some words and number. So they, will ha they just use some bad pass. Not they are using good paths, users are users. But one point that we will figure out here, like since you have a lot of stat statistical data, what we could do? We could grab the top 100 passwords and just make sure that they are not using that. And so uh, we're not whitelisting, but we're just making sure that they're not going to use some dumby password. Because that's the only way you could make sure that they are going to use a good pass or at least they are not in the top 100 when they brute force it will be really quickly. So, I was crawling and I found that uh, I thought it was very funny. You could get a job from headers. Ask me how. <laughs> That's funny. I was playing like, I was just playing with burp and so like, ex-hacker header, if you're reading this, you should visit automatic.com select jobs and apply to join the fund. Mention this header. And so I, 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 I just access and they have a lot of jobs over there. <laughs> That's a good way, like at least 
they, 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 they probably are, oh, at least they look on the headers. <laughs> and those guys, they, they are the WordPress creators. They keep the stuff running. They have a lot of jobs listed here. I, I thought this was a joke because I was trying to do something illegal. But no, it's real. They really want to. Like, if you're a developer, they have a lot of, a lot of jobs there. And, but what I want to show really here <laughs> is the stats code. Like, the stats code is when you do some requests, you have a stats code. When it's OK, it's 200. We have a couple of different codes. Like, some codes are for internal, uh, for server errors. For some codes are for uh, client errors. But the, like for us on this case here especially, we are going to, to use 200 as the good code and the 4, 404 that's not found as another code. Like because like when some, something malicious or some bot or some scanner is running, you, that, that IP will generate a lot of 404. And so like in the end, like we have a request time. We have the request, the full request here, like a regular browser, we have the refer, we have the information here, all the, and so that we receive okay. Okay, uh, uh, stats code okay doesn't mean that this password it's okay. It's just an uh, uh, answer from, this, from, the ser from the web server. And so after you do this Basic, really basic, basically, like you, look, you need to spend a lot of time look on the traffic, like as I, as I showed, like with that get request, you see, like sometimes the application have a lot of variables, so it could take forever, but it's worth. At at the end, you could slip, like and and figure out like okay, I could slip a bit more, like because nobody's going to hack my website on the middle of night. And so we cre I create like maybe. If in future, we're going to release like a tool because there is some, some big difference about release something and the code that I do. <laughs> the code that I do is not something I could release because I do something as system administrator that to make my life easier. And so I start to analyze some traffic that I saved and that PCAP, that's why I, I told that saved in, at the PCAP and so you could keep work on that. And so I create some rejects based on the URA. So here you probably have numbers and here you have some words and space and could be since this is for search. The page ID is only numericals. So like here's another search, another search. And so I create some, some, some rejects and run against the, my script. And so I have like those URL will fit here and those will fit here. And so I could use the re those rejects just to protect my application. I could create some web application firewall. I could add something in, on Apache or add a, a simple if inside the uh, Nginx. Doesn't matter. You could just add these rejects and block the traffic. And so we have, for sure, you have a, a couple of information that will not match. And so that kind of thing you could analyze and reanalyze and make sure that's not malicious or maybe you're missing some rejects, some stuff like that. And, and the good side, like, when you're deploying this, you could deploy, like, on the, on the IDS mode. I'm a, I, I came from the IDS world. And so, like, you could just deploy on monitoring mode when you're using the real traffic. And so, and so you could fix some false positives because probably you, you missed something. And so you have, like, some traffic that you probably need to do some new, new work. Or maybe you probably, those rejects, will get some regular traffic. And so, just a quick challenge. Like, you could keep your beer a bit colder. What's wrong here? Like, why this is malicious? Just to see if everybody's awake. Any guess? The username, the username here. 
No, no, no. That's not. That's a try. One more try. All right, who tried? I didn't see who. Who? The IP? No. The get? Not, not really. Like, what's wrong here? Like, we have a, a Mozilla runner, Abo, Chrome, like, not a real new version, but no browsers so will use the HTTP 1.0. That's, that's why it's wrong. Who, who gives some suggestion? Oh, I have one more. Maybe three people will. And how about here? Besides being an IP from Ukraine. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 uh, uh, I'm not talking about missing because we don't have the, the whole information here because it could not fit. You remember when I saw, like, when you post at wplogin.php, remember that the button adds some information to the content. And if you look here, the post log, they just have the log and the, the password. So it's not a regular request. It's somebody trying to do some brute force. Make sense? You got it? I just come back here quickly. Like here. Like when, when you have the full request, you have the log, the name, and the password. But the button, if you're a regular user, a real user, they will add more information. And at that case, it's missing. They just send the user and password. Probably a brute force. Right. And so that's the summary. Uh, we, we capture the traffic and we split the traffic. Headers, map variables, all the information you to work and, and, and you figure out that it could block. Because maybe you could block more stuff that I could. Because like we handle like a, a, a thousand different websites, so you cannot block everything because you have a lot of different customers. That's hard. But if you have your own server, and you could block probably more things. So you split the traffic. You compare the variable against rejects that you create. If you don't have, you could create new rejects. And so we test with real traffic. And so everything works, so you grab a beer. That's it. So that's the first, the first step, the analyzing traffic. So the second step, uh, we need to analyze the file directors and structure. And so we have file directors, permissions, and monitor stuff. And so like if you get a WordPress turbo, you have a lot of files. If, if you Google about some, some guys read some stuff about the files, about directories, that's real cool. And, but you need to focus. Like if you take care about all the files all the time, you get, get crazy. And so what's the, the basic structure? Config files and installation files. Like if you, if you, if you like in the, the CMS hacking talk, like sometimes to figure out the version of the something, he just have access to chain log or readme stuff that is inside the, 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 the WordPress or Joomla installation. So we need to take care about that. You have a very important file, WP admin, that you have all the admin stuff, user, usually like when you have uh, where you could log in as admin of the, the web or the, the WordPress site. We have WP includes that are core files. So when you get infected, like that, those files could just be replaced with the, the other terrible files. And so you have WP content, you have themes, plugins, uploads. You need to take care especially on uploads, if you allow uploads. You need to really take care about that. And you have like, the XMLRPC.php, that's, that's file 
uh, they love to attack that. And I will show a bit, a bit more about that. So what, 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 what is the XML rpc.php file? He's supposed to handle comments. But comments comes with spammers. So that's a kind of stuff that you need to balance. They could ping back. He could ping a website. I will show here. So they use for DDoS attacks. And uh, we have some blog posts about that, that it was crazy because it was enabled by default. We have user auth. Like if you use this, this get users blogs, you could brute force. And so like we are like protecting only WP login like for brute force. And so we saw that they're brute forcing using the XML file. And so like we need to protect them. Or if you want to have some fun, you could like maybe redirect for, for some runny pots and, and, and show who is the boss. Like you rack, what do they say? Like you rack my, my blog, I sniff your packets. Like that's a kind of share, sharing needs. And so here a sample, like I'm talking about the XML RPC login attempts. They, they access the file, and so they send the user here, that, that's a user test. So never create a user called a test, because you probably create, you probably use some bad password, because you say, no, 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 it's just quickly, it's temporary. And those users stay forever. And like the password here on this sample is sick boy. So they are just brute forcing. And like we, we, we take some time to, to figure out that. And so we start to, to, to really understand the, the, the API behind the, this, this file. Some brute force. So here is a, a brute force. That's why we found this they are using. Because like we, we figure out like we are protecting the WP admin, so we are good, but we are not that good. So that's amount of requests we got on that period. Like it was like I think like probably here in the beginning of July they start they discover that, and so it's a kind of they share a lot of information I think between them because that's crazy, and so suddenly it starts more and so. A big spike, and so like here in the middle of July, they start to, to go really, really hard. And so, what 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 you did like that, that that's a problem. Like XML RPC, they need to have access to that. So we create a rule that if they have the XML file, XML access plus the 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 WP blog users stuff. So we are going to block. So the pingback. Did, did somebody hear about the, the DDoS using the pingback? You did? So basically, like you could use a command line, any WordPress, hitting the file, they have like a method name called pingback, dot ping. And so you put the victim sites here, and they start to send a request to that website. But any WordPress could be used because it was enabled by default. So you could like go to Google, enumerate like 100,000 of WordPress, and just create a script and probably your DDoS. And, like, and so you get something like this. Uh, 162,000 WordPress websites attacking our customers. And that's what's crazy. Because like is is a, a kind of regular traffic from real IPs is not kind of a racket IPs kind of being racket but it's not real racket. Another another point that we need to take care of is WP admin access. I mean access because like we're like for here we are like that that that's that's the fun part. Like usually have a couple of, of blocks real blocks here and suddenly have some spikes. And so we have spikes, and when you really get in deep and find some new things, like 
This is like 63,000 attempts like a week. That's some numbers. It's, it's not usually that number. Sometimes it's much more, sometimes a bit less. But imagine like we block like a lot of attacks like for WP admin only. And some customers, they just disable this protection. So like you don't have logs for that. So probably they have much more access to the information, but we don't know. It's up to the customer. You just have uh, this, this, we have this feature, but it's up to them. So, so sometimes it's hard because some websites, they need to allow anyone to, to, to log in, right? And so just quickly, some HX rest restriction files, the uploads, like if you do options index, like a lot of people could upload, but if you don't want that all the information get listed. So you could add this to make sure that not going to list. And this you are not allowing for an outside somebody have access to a .php file. That's a, a very simple sample. But like when you allow uploads, they could upload a web shell, right? And so if they upload a web shell, they could like start to run, send some commands. But if you have something like this, you avoid that. They could upload, but oh well, like they could change the, the extensions and all that stuff. You need to really take care about that, but. And so like WP admin, like if you could allow only a few users, a few IP servers, that's much better. But if you have a regular browser, a regular blog, that's kind of hard. The XML RPC, we block by default in our service. So if the customer need by any reason have some access, we allow everybody to have access. But we have some rules, as I told, like in the, in the correlation logs to keep a kind of protection. And here are a couple of more samples like block like text files, log files, just make sure people by mistake some information is over there. And so, so another, another point, like the third step, local protection and hardening. So you need to mitigate. As, as everybody knows here, there is no 100% security. And so we want to mitigate. So what do you do? I just cut the Ethernet cable and make it offline so you're good. But how you do that? We have some, some tricks here. We have real-time monitoring option. Like you could download OSAC, it's an open source project. And like besides all the, the features that they have, they have this awesome feature for, line, for Linux that it's used the iNotify um, functionality from the kernel. So in real time, if somebody change any file that you, you think it's important, any extension, they will just send you alert. That's very interesting. Like, talking about the CMS hacking, <laughs> uh, I don't know, they, 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 I don't know why Greg needs some, to do something on the server for them. And so they, they just give the, the, a kind of admin access to him, to the WordPress. And what he did, he just, remove the 404.php file content and change for a web, a web shell because they don't want to give the web a shell for it. <laughs> and so he, he just did that. If you have this running, you get on the right way why they change that. If you have a malware infection, why they, they change that. Why they create new files. And so like when you have some infection or, or some, somebody hitting your server, you, you, you have like to monitor this in real time, like the, if you read the network security monitor, the book, like it's how about how fast you could detect the attacker? It's not about like prevent 100% because it's a kind of impossible. The attacker will always have access if he wants. That's the biggest true in life. But you could try to make the life difficult. So another three showed ideas that we have that you saw, two main 404, like who generates a regular user will not access a lot of not found information in your server. So it or it's a bot or it's a web scanner or it's something malicious. It's not a good a regular user. 
Another, another, another threshold like get per, per time for the same IP. Like as a regular IP, you will not send too much information, like too, mu too, man too many gets. Like I'm not, not going to send like 50 requests in three seconds. That's not common. Post the same concept. So that's kind of idea that we saw that we could create. Like we could, we could monitor a bit and s get some times and thresholds, and so we could add that. Special file, file permissions. Like, do you do you guys know the a command called change attribute in Linux? Like, we have like I'm just simulating a, a quick a quick infection. Like, we have like echo mar content to test dot php. So cat test dot php mar content. So we list the permissions and like Spooker they have permissions. That's okay. And I, I, I list the special attributes now. Like I, I just did chat is ch ATTR plus I. And so we you become this file immutable. And so like if I, I'm a spooker, still spooker here, I try to add a content, I don't have permission. So it's a kind of paranoid. But if like the AppSec server has that, like like Greg will not get the web shell, because like he could read the content, the web the web user could read the content, but he could not add information. So we need a route to change the permission of our files, and so we, because most of time, unless you are upgrading your WordPress, the chains are on the, the database, the files are 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 the same. So that's a kind of stuff that it could add. That's a kind of paranoid, but that's a kind of very nice. I think I'm running out of time. And so just to finish the fourth step, some statical data. So statical data is where false positives become something interesting too. Because like you could figure out what I'm doing wrong or or maybe how could I could improve that. And so we do some counterintelligence like work on behaviors, alerts, to catch new trends, like those, those blog posts I mentioned before, like it's a kind of new trends. Like when you release that, everybody starts to figure out, oh, we're, we're being attacked, there, stuff like that. And running pods, like we have kind of real life running pods. <laughs> That's all we have. Because we have some, some good, some good, some, some clients that people really try to, to rack that. And so like behavior is all about how you look on the problem. Like if you have like some three user agents like this, like this only three sample for a thousand. I can just put that. How you're going to protect, like what you're going to create, you're going to, how you going to behave with that. Any guess? Like we, we usually look on different approach. Like you could look, tell me like it could be A B C D that you have in everything, but if you look at A B C D, that's uh, why it's a blacklist way of doing stuff. So if by any chance the attacker just changed D for E, you are out of game. They are still. But what is common here? All the user agents they have like 19 bytes. That's how you try to look things different because. It sometimes it's a kind of crazy, like too much information going on, and you need like, oh my God, what do I need to do? They are they're going to win the battle, and so we figure out, oh, they are missing this, and so we try to see anything like we could. So, uh, some stat statistic, like we block like in a week, like a lot of access to XML, and if you look by IP, like. USA is, is the most country that attacks. But that's, 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 that's common because like, I think most of the hosting and infected machines, they, they are hosted in the US, so that's pretty common. And so China in second, and so a couple of more countries here. And so like, one point very, very interesting, if you're doing to do to create some protection, use Like I, I could 
Uh, if I'm not wrong, like 4% of our block is JYP. The customer could set, like, I don't want traffic for this and the, the, those countries. And so they could just block. And so 40%, that saves a lot of performance and traffic and, and CPU. The top method, so get is the most used. Post is a bit, is in second. Head, trace, cook. I don't know what's cook. <laughs> Return to cook. I think I'm out of time. But if you could stay a little bit before lunch. I could finish it. <laughs> and some stuff like here. I'm just finished. So HTTP version 1, as, 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 as I told you, like regular browsers doesn't use HTTP 1.0. We have some scripts that and some bots that they use. And so like we block like only for a week almost 1 million requests using HTTP version 1.0. And and I think because they have the big fire of China, they could not update their web browsers. And so poor China, they have some very old browsers. So they are the top one here using HTTP 1.0. Ukraine, Singapore, like that kind of traffic. Like if you have a, something related to US, like you don't want traffic from, for a lot of different countries. Brazil. We're here. And so in summary, like we reverse the traffic, analyze the application structure, it doesn't matter.